Well, okay, thank you very much for having me. Really, I appreciate it. It's an honor. And uh, we're going to start with a video made by my associate in California, the guy I told you about, the Egyptian that I helped for the choirs and uh, become a Missouri Senate pastor and missionary. So it's a very nice short video. Then we'll do a PowerPoint uh, on, uh, on uh, the book, uh, the booklet, you know. A biblical response to Islam. Okay, so let's see the song here. Yet. Salam Ministries, a Lutheran response to Islam. Jesus' last instructions to the church was, "Go and make disciples of all nations." This is our great commission, our marching orders. There are more than 7.5 billion people in the world today. One out of four of them is a Muslim. Numbers of Muslims in the United States are increasing with the influx of refugees coming from the many regions of conflict in the Muslim world. God is doing unprecedented work among Muslims today. The number of Muslims who came to faith in Christ in the past 18 years is more than Muslims who came to faith in Christ in 14 centuries combined since the rise of Islam. Islam is a works-based religion. The Muslim's relationship to God is a relationship of a slave to his master. Through the work of Salam Ministries, Messiah for Muslims, Muslims come to church and know that God is the Heavenly Father. We go to them and preach the gospel of grace. Salam Ministries helps immigrants, refugees, and international students, provides training about Islam, equipping congregations to engage Muslims in their communities and share the gospel with them. His last commandment is our first priority. Salam Ministries, a Lutheran response to Islam. There is something Nader said, uh, his name is uh, Nader Hanna, like Ralph Nader, Nader and uh, that in the last 10 years, uh, more Muslims were called to faith in Jesus than 1,500 years. Why do you think is that? For the you. Well, some of them, I baptized 50 people, but uh, the, uh, the social media, you know, uh, the, the world has become an, a global village, you know. And uh, what's important is that uh, Islam is ruled by fear, okay, and especially those who come to the West, Okay, and are free from uh, physical persecution. They are still under persecution, but not physically, you know. Uh, they may deny them a job, they may deny them a spouse, they may uh, uh, put pressure on them, but they cannot kill them in the West, you know, like they do. In, because if you convert from Islam to another religion, they may kill you, you know, uh, in, in uh, the Middle East or North Africa. And uh, so, uh, uh, Islam has a very, very intricate, uh, sophisticated, if I can say, uh, narrative against Christ. And even uh, uh, many of the chapters in the Quran deal with Jesus Christ uh, as a prophet and deny his, the sonship of Jesus Christ and kind of uh, attacks Christianity in a false way. And they accuse Christians of being polytheists, okay? That we worship three gods, not one god and three persons, okay? So they misunderstand the Trinity. And the Trinity for them is Allah, Jesus, and Mary, you know, in the Quran. So we have to kind of, so who is the father of lies? Satan, right? Satan has his grip on, on the Muslim heart, actually. And uh, it's, uh, you have Buddhism, you have atheism, you have, uh, you know, 
agnosticism, you have uh, whatever, but uh, they asked Richard Dawkins, who's the famous atheist, so what's next? He said, nothing, you know. He cannot organize the atheist, you know. But Muslims are organize each other, you know. They are organized, they are uh, well funded, okay. Not only well funded because of the Gulf and Saudi Arabia, they are very generous. It's a works religion. So the works religion, they believe if you build a mosque, Allah will build you a palace, okay, in, uh, in you know, in paradise. You know? So it's a works religion. That's why in Ramadan they believe that, uh, uh, I gave a radio interview to issues, etc. recently at the beginning of Ramadan. They believe that uh, if you do a good deed in Ramadan, it's equal to 1,000 deeds another time, you know. So, so I have, I know Muslims who are not well to do, and they receive every day a meal from the mosque. A very good meal, you know, barbecued uh, chicken and lamb and rice and salad and soup, a full meal, you know. The guy doesn't fast, but he said, I'm gaining weight because of this, you know, every day, you know, every day a good meal, you know. So, I mean, uh, this is why uh, our, uh, uh, I, I met uh, Brother Andrew, who was a missionary to the Soviet Union. He used to smuggle Bibles. Uh, in Lebanon, 2002, I translated for him. I took him to the founder of Hezbollah, the terrorist organization. Hezbollah is support, a Shiite organization supported by Iran, you know. And I took him to one of the founders uh, and uh, we gave him a Bible in Arabic. And he forgot his necktie in my van. I kept it as a souvenir, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, Brother Andrew, wherever he goes, they open doors for him. He's very famous, you know. So uh, Brother Andrew wrote a book after the fall of communism and he said that the biggest challenge to the West and Christianity after communism is Islam, really. And so how he dedicated what what's left of his life, now he's very old, to, to kind of uh, uh, work among Muslims, to reach Muslims. This is why uh, Concordia Publishing asked me to write this booklet, you know. And uh, it's very short. Uh, it took me three months to write it because they keep drilling me, you know. Uh, editing and editing and editing, you know, to make it like a cut like a knife, you know. And it's very succinct and short, and uh, you can read in one hour, 32 pages only. I wrote uh, 50 pages for a book called The Christian Difference. It's a big, good resource for you, for CPH. Uh, it has chapters on uh, Hinduism, on agnosticism, atheism, Mormonism, uh, Sikhism, everything, you know. So the Christian difference also. So let's talk a little bit about this booklet today and I'll, I'll take your questions, okay? So, uh, so as I always say, love conquers, okay? And we have to kind of uh, reach uh, our neighbor with love and understanding and respect as well. You cannot really uh, insult somebody and tell them to follow Christ. You know, uh, one of the biggest lies in Islam is that they think that they have reformed Christianity, that reformation did not happen in 1516, it happened in uh, uh, 7th century Arabia when Muhammad uh, claimed that he is a prophet from Allah and that uh, Christianity was corrupted, Judaism was corrupted, and he's coming with the perfect message, final message, to humanity. 
So we have really to be careful, uh, you know, know that uh, Christians, are, uh, Muslims are very proud of their, you know, uh, of their uh, traditions and they believe that they own the truth with a capital T. Okay, uh, one of the biggest problems in Islam is the Quran, the Book of Islam, okay? The, bo the Book of Islam as a historian, I believe it's a historical development and it was compiled in, uh, uh, through the decades, but uh, for Muslims, they believe that the Quran was revealed during Ramadan in one chunk from the seventh heaven, they believe that there are seven heavens and uh, uh, Allah is uh, beyond the seventh heaven and he, he brought on, in Ramadan in the seventh century, he brought uh, or sent uh, the Quran, his book to the first heaven and then Muhammad started receiving revelation through the angel Gabriel. So. For, for Muslims, the Qur'an is like the Logos uh, for us, the Word of Allah. For in Islam, the Word of Allah is the Qur'an. If you want to talk to Allah, read the Qur'an. Even though the Qur'an is archaic Arabic, okay, they don't understand it, they memorize some of it in order to do their prayers. Without it, you know, they cannot really uh, fulfill their prayers. I baptized a woman from Iran, uh, uh, five years ago and uh, she said uh, uh, when she worshipped in, uh, in Iran in Arabic she didn't understand anything then somebody a her hairdresser is Armenian she invited her to her church okay and uh, the Armenian church uh, they had Farsi worship so she started understanding something you know and then she saw Jesus in a dream you know, and this is something that's happening, you know. They are, Muslims are seeing Jesus in dreams and visions. When, uh, when Muslims re reject the word of God, and they don't really want the Holy Spirit to, in their lives, and they, God has another way, you know. And uh, they, we have in our synod, Missouri Synod, a, 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 a pastor, his name is Chad Foster. Chas Foster is a Messianic Jew, okay? He was a Jew and uh, he was a, uh, a scientist in the beginning, then uh, he visited a Lutheran church and he started, you know, uh, learning about the Lutheran theology and God called him to faith, then he became Reverend Dr. Chad Foster. And uh, Chad Foster uh, came to Lake Delavan uh, four years ago and gave a presentation to the pastors. I was there and being, I mean, with my background, I came up and asked Chad Foster a question. Uh, our people are seeing Jesus in visions and dreams. Are the Jews having the same thing? Because, because of his background, he reaches Jews too. He said, yes, exactly. And he said something very important. He said, uh, while the West is a, a culture of rationality, the Middle East is a culture of revelation, you know. You may convince them about Jesus, like yesterday I showed uh, in the church least trouble about uh, the case for the resurrection. Have you heard of least trouble? Least trouble writes books about, you know, how to reason uh, your faith, you know. And uh, in America, we are facing a lot of, uh, you know, challenges, not only Islam. So you have really to equip yourself. They are short books, these travel, even videos. You can find them on YouTube, you know. Tells you about the case for Christ, the case for resurrection, the case for Easter, the case for God. He was an atheist, okay. Lee Strobel was an atheist and uh, he was the legal advisor for the Chicago Tribune. And his wife became Christian and he thought I, he wants to uh, undo her faith. So he, uh, he started write, trying to write evidence against the resurrection of Christ. 
and he found that there is more evidence about the resurrection of Christ. And God called him to faith and he became a, uh, a full-time writer for, for apologetics, you know. So we have really kind of to, you know, to equip ourselves, you know. We don't have to live in a cocoon, you know. We have to, to reach out, to grow and uh, to reason with people, but know that only the Holy Spirit calls to faith, you know, but we have to do our, you know, what we can do, you know. So, uh, one of the things that God used in my life is, uh, uh, let me see if, uh, yeah, uh, I was doing my uh, undergraduates for preparing for a graduate degree in history at the American University of Beirut. And the professor gave me a book written by a Canadian uh, uh, scholar called Can uh, Wilfred Cantwell Smith. Wilfred Cantwell Smith's book did not teach me anything about Islam because I went to a seminary to become a Muslim cleric, you know. I knew a lot about Islam, you know. I grew up as a Muslim. I was a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, so I knew Islam. Uh, in different phases, if I can say, you know. But there was a note, a footnote in the book that was more important than the book. He said, you cannot compare between Jesus and Muhammad because Muhammad is, according to Muslims, a human being and a prophet, while Jesus is the Son of God and the Word of God in Christianity. Okay? So you cannot compare apples to oranges, right? So if you want to compare, you know, uh, the... Uh the Quran uh, uh, to, to Jesus, you can do that, to the Logos, okay? So that really made me understand the prologue of the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, imagine that, you know, uh, something like that would really penetrate my heart and uh, teach me what, it, because when I was a Muslim, I believed that the Quran is the Word of Allah, eternal Word of Allah, okay? And uh, mind you, the, in the 9th, 10th century, 9th, 10th century, there was a group of Muslims that tried to reason, say that how could uh, the word of Allah become a book and revealed according to circumstances, okay? The word of Allah, like Muhammad, uh, uh, had lost, uh, lusted after a woman and Allah sent a verse saying, oh, let his, her husband divorce her and give, give her to you. I mean, the people started thinking, why is it possible that Allah thought about this in eternity, you know? So anyway, but, uh, so there was a, like a short civil war about uh, whether the Quran is a word of Allah, eternal word of Allah or not. They, so that group believed that it's created. So in the end, uh, the, the, the orthodox group that believed that Allah, uh, uh, the Quran, the word of Allah, uh, was victorious. And uh, till today, until today, Muslims believe that the Quran is the word of Allah, eternal word of Allah. So, uh, Muslims believe that the previous scriptures have been misunderstood, okay, or corrupted, okay. So they believe that the Quran is the final authority in, in, uh, for man's salvation. You know, uh, the word salvation is not enough in Islam. Actually, it's short. I mean, they don't believe in salvation. They believe in, in going to paradise, okay? And going to paradise is different notion. 
paradise for them is very appealing to somebody living in the desert. Rivers of honey and wine and milk and uh, trees of fruits and uh, the men believers have 72 uh, wives, virgins, you know, and the, ver the, the virgins have also, every virgin has also, uh, when you have a queen, you have a, an escort for her, like also the virgin has also 70, you know, escorts, so, so a man believer, uh, a Muslim has, he would have his way with 49,000 maybe, etc. So they would spend their lives in paradise, co in copulation, you know. So that's really kind of, not really the heaven we think about, right? We believe that Jesus said, there is no marriage in paradise, in, in heaven. He said, nobody is given in marriage. So, so for us, to be with Jesus is enough, spiritual, you know, for them. So salvation is not the word used in, in Islam, you know. And they believe that everybody is born a Muslim. You were born a Muslim and your parents made you Christian, <coughs> corrupted you, you know. So, uh, so they don't believe in original sin. And this is one of the most problem, uh, difficult problems that sin is a mistake. It's not, you are sin, not, not sinful by nature, you know. So, uh, yeah. How can, uh, do I deal with this when I talk to Muslims? I tell them, is the apple tree an apple tree because it, uh, you know, uh, have apple fruits, right? You know? Yeah, so if we are, si we, we, we are sinning, okay, it means it's in our nature, you know? Do you teach your kids how to make mistakes when they are young or they just, uh, you know, goof? Up, right? Yeah. They just, you know, uh, they. You don't teach them. They, it's in them, you know. Jealousy. My my daughter, when uh, uh, I had another kid uh, after 11 years, uh, after my uh, youngest do daughter, uh, she was 11, he was, you know, born, and she was jealous because she's a baby in the family, you know. Mm -hmm. And we discovered, the, the, the baby didn't sleep well at night, you know. And he was crying most of the time, and we thought he had hernia or something. We took him to doctors. Then, after a year, she confessed. She used to put scotch tape on his head and... <laughs> yeah, because she was jealous. So, such an innocent uh, girl, you know, so jealous of the baby. So, uh, you don't teach them to do this. They do it, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, there are different schools of reaching Muslims, but uh, I always like to, do, to be gentle, you know. I've been kind of doing this for uh, 15 years in Chicagoland, for 20 years now in different places of the world. Once I was in Toledo, Ohio, and I used to give tracts to go, go to the mosque, you know, give tracts, and uh, so they called me, and they said, don't come back. I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> so uh, they have there a, a mosque and a school called Toledo Academy, Islamic Academy, okay? So they have departments, one of them, the uh, Department of Religion, you know, like high, Lutheran High School, you have departments, right? So the head of the, the Islamic Department called me after two weeks, and he said, I heard you do ESL, teach English as a second language. I said, yeah, sure. He said, I am Algerian and I want to go for a master's degree at Toledo University. Can you help me with English? I said, yes. So I used to uh, do, uh, use the parsonage at uh, a church called Gloria Day. It's closed now, mm -hmm. unluckily, in Toledo. And uh, I invited them to come to the parsonage, have a cup of tea while we kind of start, uh, you know, uh, discussion of how to learn English or better English. He knew some English. I mean, he's living in America, but he wanted to learn more. 
So I, we sat down, I asked him, his name is Ibrahim, like Abraham, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, uh, if, you, if you want to learn Arabic more, what do you do? He said, I would read the Quran. So uh, then I asked him, if you want to learn more English, what do you do? He answered, I would read the Bible. <laughs> so I said, let's start reading the prodigal son in Luke, you know. So that was the first lesson, you see. So you have to work gently around what they believe, around their uh, doctrines. They believe that uh, uh, Gabriel is the Holy Spirit, you know. The Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Quran, but everything is distorted, okay? Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, is, he's called the Christ. Okay? Uh, let me talk about the Christ first. Uh, maybe I, I have it in a slide here. So, uh, for them, uh, they, every time Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, he is called uh, Isa al Masih, means Jesus the Christ. Okay? So, you ask them, what does the Christ mean? They don't know. Okay? It reminds me when I, uh, I was uh, driving to, to, to the Grand Canyon uh, one, uh, on, on a vacation and I uh, rented a, a new v Toyota Venza. It was my first, first time I drive the Venza. I didn't know how to open the trunk, okay? So I had to go back to the rental and ask them how to open the trunk. So when you borrow things, you don't know much about them. And Muslims borrowed the word Christ, but they don't know what it means. So I was 13 years old, I asked my Muslim cleric, I was sitting in the mosque uh, doing the Quranic studies, and I asked him, Sheikh, they call him Sheikh, means elder or Muslim cleric, uh, what does Christ mean in Arabic? He said, uh, it means he's flat-footed. Okay? Yeah, because uh, uh, the word in Arabic is like white, he said his wife, his feet are flat. This is, he said this is one explanation. Then he said maybe because he sojourned a lot, he traveled a lot. Okay? Because also the word, the root of the word Masih in Arabic means tourism, you know? He went around enjoying himself maybe, having a glass of wine here and there, you know? <laughs> and then uh, the other one he said maybe he wiped pain from the face of the earth. That was interesting, you know? Yeah. Then he said, we don't know. Yeah, this is the final, you know? God knows, Allah knows. They say, I don't know, Allah knows. So, so we need really to explain to them, like, how come Gabriel is the Holy Spirit? It's not right, you know? And we go to the Bible and open the Bible and begin with Genesis and say, the Spirit of God was on the face of the earth, okay? I, I was given this by a Coptic yesterday, okay? Uh, pastors, when they preach in the Coptic church, they hold the cross in their hand like this, you know, to show that they stick to the cross, you know? N nice, you know, symbolism, you know? And uh, the, the, the guy was explaining the trend. He said, you, you, you exist, you have a mind, and you have a, a soul, a spirit, you know? And God exists, and He has the mind, His mind, the Logos, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Okay? So this is how you could explain to a Muslim. Then, when you say three persons, you tell them, well, because God cannot be fathomed, you know. Our human, uh, you know, human faculties fall short, you know. I was, I said biology, you know. I was kind of gonna be a biochemist and uh, I was in love with biochemistry and uh, and uh, did a lot of uh, readings and uh, one of the tricks I use on people who say if you don't understand the Trinity you shouldn't believe in it I tell them well do you believe that you can you know reason things out they say yeah okay 
I asked them, do you think that uh, this universe is made of material? They said, yeah, <coughs> physical material. Then, is physical material limited, finite? They said, yes, okay. Is the world then finite? Yes, I mean, it's by conclusion. Then I asked, what would happen if you traveled to the edge of the world? Where would you fall? Yeah. <laughs> okay, our minds cannot fathom that. So how can we fathom the Trinity, you know? So we have to believe in it from the Word of God, okay? We have some explanations, but they are just, you know, uh, trying, you know, to explain. Uh, so... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, one of the things that uh, also in Islam that Allah is distant. There is no personal relationship, you know. Because of Jesus we have a relationship. He became one of us. And this is very important. And uh, Muslims uh, always uh, become hypocrites in the end because they don't have this personal relationship with God. Uh, they do uh, traditional prayers uh, five times a day. They repeat the same thing, okay, w uh, sometimes without even thinking. My, my father-in-law used to uh, turn on the radio when he prays, because when you pray you have to do kneeling and go down and, and read, recite the Quran. So while he's reciting, because he has done this for all his life. He can recite without thinking. He would listen to the news while he's re <laughs> praying. Yeah. Because he wants to hear the BBC on, on the uh, head of the hour, as they say. You know. So the person of Jesus makes God personal, make it, makes God approachable, not like Allah, okay? Uh, I talked about that, and, uh, and the Incarnation is one of the biggest problems. I tell them, uh, you believe that God, or Allah, that's, God is not Allah, okay? Allah became a book, the Quran. We believe that God became a man, which is more dignified, okay? Man is more dignified than paper, right? And he became man for 33 years, right? God became man. So, uh, so I, this is one of the challenges, you know, and only the Holy Spirit could convince a... Because they think that we worship a man who became a God, not the opposite way, you know. So we have to explain that, uh, you know. Uh, we talked about, I think, uh, paradise, etc. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I talked about this. Uh, uh, one of the biggest things is God is with us, Emmanuel, okay? And this is really uh, something, uh, uh, the word Isa in Islam, the Quran, doesn't mean anything, okay? So as I said, it, they empty the word from its meaning, while Jesus means God saves. Okay. So Isa, the word for Jesus in the Quran, doesn't mean anything. Uh, some uh, uh, Arab, you know, uh, entomologists think that it means uh, uh, the semen of a camel, you know, but has not, no meaning at all, you know. So uh, I believe it was derived from Isus, the Greek, because 
the Greek affected uh, or Islam is influenced a lot by the Greek, you know, because they lived in a Greek world in the beginning. So, uh, and Emmanuel is really a great thing that God is with us in Jesus Christ and, uh, and even though Muslims believe that Allah is with them, it's not that, as I said, personal relationship. Uh, one of their uh, uh, apologetic uh, uh, tricks is that uh, they believe that Jesus was born of, a, of the Virgin Mary, virgin birth, but then they say, Adam, if it's, this is the criteria, or the criterion, Adam was born neither from a mother nor from a father, right? So he is greater than, than Jesus. But uh, we tell them the virgin birth is a fulfillment of prophecies. And we are very consistent. The Bible is consistent from uh, Genesis to Revelations, while the Quran is erratic, you know. You don't know what's going on. There are a lot of contradictions. The true Adam was made by the hand of God from clay, but Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary because of with the Holy with the power of the Holy Spirit because because it is a fulfillment of of prophecies more than 300 prophecies in the Old Testament okay and uh, uh, yeah uh, so we have really to explain that to them and uh, and uh, uh, I, I had a good idea, I forgot I remember it anyway. So, so comparing Adam to Jesus misses the point, okay? Uh, uh, a lot of prophecies in the in the Old Testament tell about Jesus Christ and his birth, right? Uh, yeah, another thing that's very important that also they empty it, uh, even mentioned the Quran, that Jesus is the word of Allah, okay? So we have really to ask questions. What do you mean by when you say Jesus is the word of Allah? A common Muslim doesn't know. The Quran said Jesus is the word of Allah like the Logos, but they don't know that, you know. They say, well, we don't know the word of Allah. Then a spirit from him. So Adam was not the word of Allah in the Quran. So this is, again, Jesus is more important than Adam. And uh, another thing, for them, Jesus did not die on the cross, you know. So uh, this is a very, the most, the corner of our faith is the cross and the resurrection. So they deny the cross. They say that a lookalike took his place. <laughs> so then you ask, what do you mean a lookalike took his place? <laughs> so there are different interpretations. Many of them are very funny. One of them is that Judas Iscariot was punished. Uh, by Allah and put on the cross instead of Jesus <laughs> to punish him for his betrayal, okay? And that Allah cast the looks of Jesus on him. This is one opinion. This is a commentary, interpretation. They, it's not in the Quran, it's an opinion. Another opinion is that Jesus was so scared when he uh, heard that the soldiers are coming after him and he said, uh, they don't know my face. Any one of you would volunteer and take my place and say he's Jesus? A young foolish disciple said, I'll do it, sir. <laughs> and he did it. You know? Yeah, they think it's John, maybe. You know? uh, so, 
So it's really kind of ridiculous, and, uh, but one of the important catches here is that Jesus did not die in Islam. He ascended to the, to the second heaven where he lives until today in Islam. And he'll come back as a Muslim uh, <laughs> Messiah who would break the cross uh, and uh, kill, kill the, the pigs. Okay, because uh, okay. we eat pork. So I tell them, wow, Iowa would be a big massacre ground because there's more pigs than people there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so a lot of contradictions that cannot be understood unless you go back to the Bible. And this is what happened to me. I was going deeper in the Quran, uh, going to the seminary to become a Muslim cleric, and I saw that. You cannot understand the Quran without the Bible, like uh, the story of David and Bathsheba. Okay, David is mentioned that uh, the story in the Quran is truncated. Uh, it mentions that David was praying and two people climbed the fence and they were debating, telling them, I have 99 sheep and my brother had one sheep and he took it from me. And David said, you are unjust. Give him back his sheep. And then he remembered his sin and he repented. But the, the Quran doesn't mention what sin, doesn't mention Bathsheba, doesn't mention adultery, doesn't mention urea. So I found the explanation in the Bible, you know. So, so really kind of without the Bible, the Quran is just a, uh, a, a collection of contradictory stories, you know. Yeah, uh, so as I said in the message, we have to be bold, we have to reach out, we have to share the gospel with our next door neighbor irrespective of their race and ethnicity and our country of origin and know that Jesus is with us and he'll do the work. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? So who wrote the Quran, or how yeah. did that come about? Yeah, uh, they believe that Allah revealed the Quran verbatim, like letter and meaning to Muhammad. But the historical development shows that there are two parts of the Quran. One, which is uh, before uh, uh, his immigration, he immigrates from Mecca to Medina, two towns. Uh, because he was persecuted in Mecca. So the Quran in Mecca is different from the Quran from in Medina. So now most historians believe that the early Quran was written maybe 8th, 7th century. The later part of the Quran was written in the 9th and 10th century. And it was like a... Uh, uh, to justify the Arab conquest, you know. And they kind of... Part of it is... True, part of it, uh, true I mean historically, you know. Part of it is historically there, and the other part is just, uh, they collected Christian myth, and part of it is writ was written in Syria, Aramaic. Now they have discovered like uh, a uh, manuscript, of the, not the whole Quran, some of the Quran in Yemen, in the 70s, and uh, they uh, kept it there, in an old mosque, uh, you know, Muslims revere the Quran, so they cannot do this. You know, if it's a Quran, they can't, can't do this. They believe it's the word of Allah. You know, so if a Quran becomes tattered, what they do is dig a hole in the sand, uh, uh, you know, wall and cement it. You know, and or nobody would touch it. Okay, so. Uh, so in the 70s, they discovered in the old mosque a manuscript of the Quran, and uh, uh, they did. The Yemenis are very poor, and they, I mean, corrupt. They don't want, care about studies, what have you. So they gave it to a German scholar, and the German scholar who knew Semitic languages started reading that manuscript, and he discovered something written under the Arabic in Aramaic. 
and he discovered that part of the Quran was written in Aramaic and if you read part of the Quran in Aramaic they may make more sense so for example uh, the Quran in Arabic promises those who die in a jihad will have 72 virgins okay it, it, it doesn't say 72 it will have virgins like birds if you read in Aramaic it means those who die in a jihad will have uh, grapes like pearls, you know. So those who died, die for nothing. They are just having grapes in paradise, you know. So there was also a, uh, a baffling uh, term in Arabic that we couldn't really interpret. Uh, it's, uh, it says, let uh, Muslim women uh, uh, cover their pockets. This is how I'm literally, cover their pockets, okay? And it doesn't mean anything. Thought maybe it's their cleave, cleavage, maybe it's their armpits, because maybe a pocket, that's like a pocket. But in Aramaic it says, let them put the uh, a belt of chastity, you know, around them. Makes sense, you know, that, you know. So, so this is why, I mean, it's very controversial who wrote the Quran, you know. We don't know, you know. Uh, maybe Muhammad, they claim he, that he was illiterate. <laughs> and that Allah gave him the Quran. So this is how, you know, the, the play on Christian doctrine. Mary was a virgin and she gave birth to Christ. Muhammad was illiterate and he gave birth to the Quran, you know. See, I mean, the play on, on the Christian doctrine. Satan is the father of lies. Okay, other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.